So this car still has the eight-speed ASIN automatic, not the DSG, so we don't have launch control. The best that we can do here is just brake boost. So I'm gonna put the ESC to sport, leave it to that. But there's no built-in launch control in this car. So we're gonna have to brake boost it on our second attempt. And now let's start with a basic zero to 60 run. Three, two, one, let's go. There's a good amount of delay here. One more thing that pisses me off here is the virtual cockpit. Despite this being a 2019, the virtual cockpit here is so convoluted, complex, and confused. It's super confusing. I have to go here, I have to edit everything here, it comes here, I can't figure out how to zoom it properly. Because without it, you just press view and you roll the, the dial and that's it, it zooms in, zooms out. You got Google Earth, you got all these awesome perks. No, not here. You can't, you can't change it at all, unfortunately. Welcome back everyone. Today we have a 2019 Volkswagen Ardeon SEL on our channel. I'd like to thank Shihi Nissan of Manassas for providing me this car for a test drive and especially Misha and Christian. I will attach all their information down below in the description. And as always, today we're gonna check out the exterior of the car, take it for a test drive, do some zero to 60 draggy tests, and I will share my impressions about the car with you at the very end of the video as always. So make sure to smash that like and subscribe button and let's get started. This is definitely a very unique car. I own one of these myself. I had a 2019 SC4 Motion in white. This car does give me a lot of memories right off the bat.
let's set up Draggy and measure the accuracy of the speedometer. traveling 60 miles an hour I'm seeing exactly 60 well now 62 62 63 62 let's get up to 70 so going 70 I'm seeing 70 it's right on point that's amazing a very accurate speedometer 70 wow 74 74 this is probably the most precise speedometer that I've seen over the past, well, the 10, 20 cars. Because usually they're off by about one to two miles an hour. And German cars in general are off by more than that. For example, if we were looking at an Audi S5, the virtual cockpit there, we would be seeing about 72 to, yeah, about 72 miles an hour at 75. That would be the average deviation. But here, it's right on point.
Right, so we are approaching our zero to 60 strip to do our tests. I'm gonna say our first run is probably gonna be around seven seconds, give or take. That's my estimate. Don't know what this car will show. And I don't know if this is stock or tuned. It does feel pretty stock to me though. Because mine, mine had a stage one with bolt-ons and it felt quicker than this. But in the low speeds, you can't really tell much of a difference. It's, it's usually once you start going up past like 60, 70s when you can really start feeling the difference between stock or tuned. So this car still has the eight speed ASIN automatic, not the DSG, so we don't have launch control. The best that we can do here is just brake boost. So I'm gonna put the ESC to sport, leave it to that. But there's no built-in launch control in this car. We're gonna have to brake boost it on our second attempt. And now let's start with a basic zero to 60 run. Off idle, of course. Alrighty, so, all right, so. Three, two, one, let's go. There's a good amount of delay here. It really waits to get going. And we got 7.18 seconds on our first attempt. So I was about right when I said, we're gonna see around seven seconds. You floor that pedal and for almost an entire second, the car slowly rolls. So you don't get any instant acceleration. You floor it and then you go and the the weight between the second to third shift when the car is changing gears is quite long like if you go this is going to be the shift boom boom like you can feel how much of a delay there is between the second or third gear shift once you're going from three to four it's fine this is what they eliminated with the dsg that they put in the 2023 model. It was always my pet peeve, just, just how slow that two to three shift is. Well now, this time let's turn off the climate control and do a proper one eighth mile run once the traffic passes. And see what we're gonna get. I'll probably say something like 6.7, 6.8 seconds. We're gonna probably see that number right now, give or take. It's going to build some boost, launch nicely, and then it's going to hiccup with, with the gear changes. Alrighty. So, okay, let's reset the draggy. Alright. Build and boost. Let's go. Boom. Six point four seven, wow. So we got 6.47 seconds, valid run. And then we did 1 8th mile and 9.4 at 74 miles an hour. So that's about right on spot with what my Arteon did when it was stock. But this did have a little bit crisper gear changes for some reason when I, when I was going. But this is definitely stock. This is not tuned by any means. So let's shut off Draggy. We don't need it anymore. We don't need draggy. Now let's take some back corners and I will talk about my impressions of the car. Because I've already driven this car quite enough time throughout my ownership and now to, to give a whole summary of it. So starting from the very basics, this car competes with the Kia Stinger GT. And ironically, both of these cars are gonna be axed for next year. So you're not gonna see the Stinger or the Ardeon anymore. The only reason why you would want to get an Ardeon over the Kia Stinger GT, one is you want a more civilized, relaxed car because the Stinger is stiffer, it's faster, much, much faster stock on stock. There's, it's a day and night difference. Um, and you want a German brand. You don't want to get a Kia for whatever reason. And I totally get that. That's, that's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. You totally understand. So this car does have all-wheel drive in, in many variations. Some, some are front-wheel drive. But the handling of this car, it's not something that you would necessarily call sporty or aggressive. There is a hint of understeer here when we're trying to go. Like, it, st it stays on the road well. Like, don't get me wrong, it stays on the road quite well. 
but if you're trying to take it to its limits you're, you're gonna feel some understeer and the brakes are not meant for aggressive driving in this car they fade very quickly and by 19,000 miles on my car I already yeah see like you're trying to turn and it just under understeers you need to constantly like let off the gas by 20,000 miles my brakes were toast and even though I wasn't really aggressive or anything I would just normally drive it and use it but still for a large barge land yacht this does have very adequate handling so for 99.9% .9 of the situations you're gonna find this more than enough it's grippy it listens to your inputs directly there's no issue but it's not anything that I would call athletic just good fair handling the brakes on this specific car are good they're not faded they're not um, messed up because many of them are but with these Ardeons the suspension and the bushings they are constantly squeaking all the time like even in this car in my car by 20,000 miles everything squeaked in my suspension everything like it'd be like, ree, 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 ree. It's like it's like somebody you know growling on a Saturday morning not wanting to get out of bed literally I did not like that the steering wheel is thin it's super duper thin I wish it was a little bit thicker and luckily Volkswagen did fix that with the new generation for 2023 and 22 they finally made it nice and thicker and more Audi like and this is all Audi inspired right here but this everything here this 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 is pure 2010 Jetta and this this is this is like a Jetta so while you do get some hints of luxury touches this is not a luxury car despite its higher price tag and when I say higher price tag I'm talking about the 40 to 50k range for that kind of price you can easily get yourself a BMW an Audi a Mercedes a little bit smaller but it's gonna be a better performer in terms of acceleration figures comfort handling especially if you go for the real wheel drive bias cars once you're moving here the power is good there's plenty of passing power never had any issues with it it moves well gets the job done well but the lag off the line just kills all the fun here I'll, I'll show it one more time when we roll up to the light you're gonna see it one more time overall I, I think this is a good car it's it's a solid car it's it's built well inside I haven't had any squeaks or any rattles beside the suspension it's got a nice and big sunroof here it's a comfortable cruiser so if you're just buying this car to commute to drive your family it's a great option for this class you're not gonna be upset with it or wanting more from it if you if you get it for this reason now if you get it for the sake of saying oh I have a sports car and it's sporty it's a coupe it should be fast you're better off buying the Stinger GT it's, it's gonna be a much fun more fun option because the Stinger feels like a performance car and this feels like a, just a civilian version One more thing that pisses me off here is the virtual cockpit. Despite this being a 2019, the virtual cockpit here is so convoluted, complex, and confusing. It's super confusing. I have to go here, I have to edit everything here, it comes here, I can't figure out how to zoom it properly. Because without it, you just press view and you roll the, the dial and that's it, it zooms in, zooms out. You got Google Earth, you got all these awesome perks. No, not here. You can't, you can't change it at all, unfortunately it's the way it is it's great that Volkswagen even gave this option but still the ride is very compliant you got um, an adaptive suspension modes I usually would just stay in comfort it's like my favorite you got big side mirrors excellent visibility for a coupe like this of this, of this uh, body style like the I mean like the roof line it's got great visibility all the way out yeah so that will sum up my impressions interior quality is decent leather's good can't complain feels nice to me 
this everywhere this 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 could have been better done like for 50 45 50 grand i feel like that there should be more soft touch materials here and here anyways that sums up our test drive today i hope you all enjoyed it and till next time